Paris. It may conjure for you images of iconic museums, the Tour Eiffel, the Louvre, also bridges, the City of Light, famous for its writers and poets and wanderers. But Paris was also the place in which people were rounded up like cattle during the German occupation and sent to their demise. One of these souls was named Dora Bruder, a 15-year-old girl, after whom the book we're talking about today was named. Patrick Modiano, Patrick Modiano's novella from 1995 or 1996, Dora Bruder. Modiano is the winner of many literary prizes, including the Nobel Prize for Literature. He was born in 1945, so he didn't live through the occupation, but his father did. In fact, his father, a Jewish man of Italian descent, refused to wear the yellow star and also refused to turn himself in while Jews were being rounded up in Paris. This period, which he didn't live through himself, is still apparently very much part of Modiano's makeup. This is a book that transcends categories. It's not exactly fiction. It's not exactly nonfiction either. You could call it a sort of memoir, partly about the author, partly about this Dora Bruder and this young girl Dora Bruder, and also about Paris itself in that period of time. The book starts with the author, ostensibly Patrick Modiano, uh, finding a newspaper clipping from 1941 about a missing girl, the eponymous Dora Bruder. And uh, I wanna read you the first page because it really sets the tone and tells you what the book's about. Eight years ago, in an old copy of Paris Soir, dated the 31st of September, 1941, a heading on page three caught my eye. Paris, missing, a young girl, Dora Bruder, age 15, height one meter, 55 centimeters, oval-shaped face, gray-brown eyes, gray sports jacket, maroon pullover, navy blue shirt and hat, brown gym shoes. Address all information to Mr. or Mrs. Bruder, 41 Boulevard, Ornano, Paris. I had long been familiar with the area of the Boulevard Ornano. As a child, I would accompany my mother to the saint Ouen flea markets. We would get off the bus either at the Porte de, the Porte de Clignancourt or occasionally outside the 18th arrondissement town hall. It was always a Saturday or Sunday afternoon. And so we're thrust into the author's search for clues of this girl who went missing in 1941. And the tone of the entire book is just like that passage. It's as if someone sits next to you in a park, a stranger, and tells you a tale in very simple, straightforward language. And then we follow the writer through the streets of Paris the same streets that were occupied by this same Dora Bruder, her peers, and her family. And it's also a place Modiano has written greatly about um, since the beginning. His first book was also a kind of farce about the occupation. And he is truly a Parisian writer, and he knows the city so well. And his books, and particularly this book, is as much about the city of Paris as it is about the characters and the people who inhabit it. We're essentially following ghosts, specters of a Paris, of a Paris that once existed, specters of the author's life as a child and later on as a young adult, and also specters and ghosts of his father's life, a father whom the author didn't know well at all. Modiano's art is one of a kind of hypnosis. Just as if you're walking through Paris at night in a fog, 
through meandering streets that bend and snake and you're not sure where the destination is or where each street will lead. And Modiano tricks you, lulls you into thinking not much is going on, that it's not about much, that he's looking for this girl, that it's the, the book is so sparse. And yet, and yet it has a way of slowly affecting you. Reading it, I was amazed and invigorated by what was accomplished through this act of writing, literature. The forgotten, those who have been annihilated by time, are resurrected. Dora Bruder can be seen and felt again like someone who has left your life but that you think about and through this act of memory and focus and recalling, it's made important, it's made vital once more. The occupation, as you may know, was a very dark time. It's not a time that most people think about when they think about Paris these days, but it was a a dark time in its history. And throughout his wanderings, the author's wanderings and research, the clues he's trying to find, we do find traces of the dead, those gone, including uh, the inanimate dead, the buildings, the architecture, the streets that are still there, but have been transformed. Buildings that have been raised where these people once inhabited buildings that have been completely changed, uh, neighborhoods and streets transformed, nothing much left from the occupation and these people that were uh, lived through such horror that Paris has forgotten. And literature in this sense is an act of remembering, a heroic act. Dora Bruder. How unlikely that we can call upon her name. A 15 year old purposely erased. And oddly, this book is not a downer. Mesmerizing, surely. Uh, it's sort of a, a hunt for existential justice that pays off, leaving in its wake a resonance and a power. In fact, the book has had such an effect in France that after the author was awarded the Nobel Prize, soon after a street was commemorated to honor the life of Dora Bruder, and the name of the street is now, uh, I think, Allée Dora Bruder. And couldn't you say that this was true poetic justice? So that's it for today's commentary review, and um, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you've read any of Patrick Modiano's work, if you've read Dora Bruder, if uh, and what other works you've enjoyed, and uh, check out my some of my other book reviews. Hope you find some value in it. Comment, like, subscribe if you wish to do so. I will see you on the next video where I'll be reviewing or talking about another book. Thanks.